Our survival as human beings relies on our ability to forget. For example, we can get up tomorrow because we forget what hurt us yesterday. But forgetting is not the same with misremembering. Last month, we watched Christopher Nolan's newest movie, Dunkirk. For those of you who didn't know, Dunkirk tells the story of the evacuation of British and French armies whom, at the time, were surrounded by their enemy, the German troops. When the lights turned on and the credits rolled, something struck me. We did not just watch Dunkirk. We watched a movie where the Germans were the bad guys in a room full of Germans. So on our way home, I can't help but ask myself, how would they feel about it? And actually, how would they feel being part of a nation that did the Holocaust? Then my mind drifted back to the time Weekend and I visited the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. earlier this year. I remember it was a gloomy day. And I did not realize that the day only got gloomier as we followed the story of a genocide of over 6 million Jewish people across Europe. Nobody saw it coming that Hitler and his party Nazi had the heart to systematically kill actual human beings by sending them into gas chambers in concentration camps. It was truly horrible and a new pain lingers with me until today. However, I was in the U.S. Of course, it was easy for Americans to talk about another nation's horrible mistake. But now that I'm in Germany, I often wonder, how would I feel to watch a movie about a Holocaust or World War II as a German person? The most humane reflex, I think, would be to want to forget. Why would we dwell on such a horrible past? But to our surprise, the Germans refused to forget. Instead, they make sure that everybody remembers. They did so by building a beautiful memorial and named it Memorial to the Murdered Jews of Europe. They're right. It was not just an accident or a mistake. It was a murder, a systematic one. And they let these blocks of concrete a painful reminder of what happened. Then I looked at Indonesia and wondered if we simply fooled ourselves into believing that we've moved on from our own dark past. Because how can we move on when we haven't even agreed on the same account of history? While the whole world has settled on naming Suharto as a dictator, as a totalitarian ruler, some of us are still having debates on whether we should name him a national hero. And then when the International People's Tribunal has declared that Indonesia is guilty for at least 10 gross human rights violations in the 1965, some of us still fail to see that this movie was made as a propaganda to make sure that we dehumanize some group of people and see them as the ultimate nemesis of our country. Because of this, I decided to call a good friend of mine who's really into history, Sandeep. Yeah, so I believe history is absolutely very important. For instance, right now I'm working with Dina Social and, this, uh, and the social welfare system. 
And I would really, when you ask someone why the system is so bad, well, almost everyone will say, just because it's like this, it has always been like this. And uh, really understanding history helps me understand why the system is like it is now. Why are we so based on the family, for instance? So I think you have a clearer understanding of why things are as they are, why things remain poor, or why things remain violent, or why we are still not Merdeka through really going in depth in history. I don't think we have spent enough time to talk about what happened in Tanjung Priok 1984, in May 1998, in Ketapang 1998, and other racially induced violence that take place in so many corners of our country. Why do we not talk about it? Why do we fail to wake up from a long sleep in the past where Suharto dictates literally every word that was written in our history books? I don't think we have moved on. I think we refuse to admit that we don't have all the facts. We fooled ourselves into believing that we have made peace with our past, when in reality, our ignorance still chained us. The Germans built a monument to remind themselves never again. We don't know what monument to build because our history is drowned in misguided fear and silenced curiosity. History is never black or white, but maybe shades of gray is enough. Because the goal of history is not to pick a side, it is to understand. It is to understand what went wrong so that we can make sure it will never happen again. Without history, we're blinded from context. We lose track of how to put our lives and our society into a bigger picture. And we cannot tell an empty political rhetoric from a genuine patriotic speech. While the only way to move forward is by forgetting our past, we can only do so after we understand what it is. Maybe the only way to become a great nation is by realizing and admitting that once we weren't. I hope when we finally wake up from this long sleep, it's not too late. Well, happy birthday, Indonesia. This is Afu, and see you in our next video.